Hi, how are you guys? I'm Katie Ryan. Sorry, give me a moment. A bunch of comments are popping up on my screen. Um, I'm Katie Ryan from Forest Floor. And today I was going to show you a little bit about what I do to layer multiple um, decoupage papers in different patterns and a little bit about the painting and how I'm well, how I'm going to do this um, cabinet. So I might have to switch angles a little bit from time to time so you can see both the furniture piece and the papers that I'm working with. So I'm going to, here, I'll hold these up. So the main paper that I'm going to be using today is this one, which is Sea Queen. This was new in the um, spring release. And I believe, uh, I'm trying to remember if this was A2. Yeah, this was the A2 size. So what I'm going to do with this is, there we go, if you guys can see, this is going to go on the front here. So what I'm thinking, let me just move this over a little bit. There you go. So what I was thinking about is taking this, putting her here in this space that's already outlined in the middle of the doors. And for these side panels, I also wanted to do something that was in the same uh, color family, but a pattern that was a little different than what's already in the sea queen, just for a little more um, visual interest. So what I decided is that I'm gonna also take pieces from um, Sweet Perfume and I'm actually going to cut out and leave this portion so that I can use this on another project <clears throat> and I'm going to be using this portion here. Now you can see once I hold them up together both the papers have a lot of the same um, colors in them but I like the tree branches and the change of texture that it'll give on the edges. But because I only happen to have this one um, at home with me, and this is the A3 size, I'm gonna need a little bit more to fill in. So I also have in A3, the arches, which I think they actually go that way, but what I'm going to do with them <clears throat> now, again, like in the sweet perfume, I'm going to cut parts out. So I'm only going to use some. Now this part, gosh, although that does look really good with this, the colors that I've used already, I think, although of course we're always subject to changing our mind, right? But I think I'm going to use this portion in with this other um, sweet perfume paper. I have to say I'm kind of, now that I see it, I really like the way this looks with the colors on the base coat of the cabinet. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. <clears throat> so just to kind of catch you up to where I am at, with, at this point in the project. So I've put in a base coat of paint on this little cabinet. And I will show you what I use if I can find it. There's one. Oh, there it is. Okay. So the base coat of paint on this is Daydream Apothecary, and I'm using uh, colors from the Coastal line. These colors were curated from uh, by Warren, Warren to Whimsy. So she uh, did curate the Coastal line. I have this color, which you can see, C. La Vie. I've also used this other lighter blue, which is Saltwater. So up until this point, <clears throat> I did one coat of C. La Vie with a little bit of salt wash in it to add some extra texture. Then I did a little bit of dry brushing and the salt water color right here. Now, when I paint, I do paint in multiple layers so that I can get a really textured and interesting 
finish. Um, I use multiple colors, multiple layers, and different techniques. The reason I left the, um, I don't have to really paint more on these panels because this is what's going to, um, we'll put the deck couch paper on. So you're not going to see this anyways. Although this wood had quite a bit of tannins coming through it. And I'm not a big fan of priming. So I just put on this light coat of salt water to help keep some of the tannins in. I don't want them to seep through the decoupage paper. But also, <clears throat> because this has a lighter background, I was concerned that if I did the panels with the darker color, the sea lobby, that it might bleed through or kind of make the image not pop as much. So that's why I, I thought if I do a quick coat of that, it'll seal some of the tannins. It'll also provide a lighter backdrop for the paper. Uh, what else did I do with this? Oh, I added, which the sides are still wet. The front is dry. But if you can see right here, <clears throat> I also added a little bit of a um, bright green color and then just, you know, blended it in, use my water bottle, let everything drip a little bit because the idea is that the end finish of this is going to look um, kind of like it was pulled up out of the sea. So it's going to be textured, very rough. A lot of blues, greens, probably a little bit of <clears throat> maybe like I have a darker brown. I have kind of a burnt orange. That's going to drip down a little bit <clears throat> to really get that patina look. So I did make sure to dry the front really well um, with a blow dryer because if this paint was even a little bit wet, I was nervous about how that would, um, <clears throat> you know, maybe make the paper slide off or I wasn't sure what that would do. So I just made sure to really dry it. So I'll show you this. <clears throat> I'll see if I can. Let me just grab my exacto knife, whatever I did with that. There it is. Okay. Now, I am going to tip this down a little. Even a little more. I just want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing pretty well. All right, so I know it's a little crooked. <clears throat> I'm going to have to, it'll probably take me a little bit of time to figure out some of the best angles to use. Um, so bear with me. I sometimes do videos live where I paint, <clears throat> but I don't often do many where I have to have the camera like this so people can see what I'm working on. So if I'm doing something that's not... Uh, that's making a bad camera angle or it's making it a little difficult to figure out or see, please uh, just put in the comments and let me know. So that way I know to change it for next time. So this is just a exacto knife. I'm gonna move my other papers out of the way. So I don't put them on accident. So as you can see, too, I had a bunch of different choices. Um, you know, the new crackle print, that one with the lace. Um, I had a lot of different papers that I thought about using. Even this one, Naturalist. Um, because I do like to cut out even particular images and then layer them. But I did decide to stick with this and the Sweet Perfume. and and um, the edge that was on the arches. 
All right. <clears throat> I do have a cutting mat down. So that I can cut on this table. And I'm sorry, I'll give you one second. So I'm just looking at, like I said, unfortunately, I can't see the comments on my phone, but I can see them on my computer. Um, so, hi, Nancy and Rachel. And hi, Teresa. I see that you guys are on here. Oh, and hello from Denmark. So I think, you bet we can see it. <clears throat> I will say that one of the things that I thought was just so awesome um, about Decoupage Queen is that a lot of the different people that use it and um, some of the other design team members are from other countries where the um, Daydream Apothecary paint and some of the other things that I carry, for the most part, they're all US based. So I thought that was just really neat about this company and um, the fact that there's so many different people that you can meet in different perspectives and styles from other countries and around the world. All right. Okay, and so Joanne, I see that you wrote that um, you want to learn about salt wash. So if you want, I can take a quick second just to show you. Uh, there you go. So the glare from the ring light is probably on there a little bit, but this is salt wash. It's just, um, you know, a paint additive. And it is uh, exactly like it sounds. It's kind of gritty. It has a little bit of texture to it. It's in powder form. You add it. You just dump some in your paint, mix it around. It becomes, I would say, kind of a, like frosting, like a frosting for a cake type consistency. And then you can put it on in different areas just to add that additional um, texture and it really bulks the paint up. And then as you paint with it, when you do layers on top, what's pretty neat is then because that's sticking up and it's rough, you can also dry brush and just catch the top of the uh, chunkier pieces and it ends up a really cool finish. I used to use it all the time and I haven't used it on the last few pieces. So because this one's gonna be kind of uh, you know, grungy, and I thought it would work well. Okay. So as far as placement, you guys can't see that quite as well without me moving the camera again. But as far as placement, I'm just going to have her go inside these lines a little bit. And I think that'll be about good. Now, I need a pencil. All right. I think I have just about everything but out here. So give me one moment. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna put her up here, position her where I would like her. Okay. Just a little bit more. All right, and then I'm just marking right along where the lines of this already are. Okay, so that I'll be able to cut it out. Now let me just see if I can show you that. 
maybe faint, but here is the lines that was just following the inside of this trim. So I'm going to use that and cut that out. And while I could probably have flipped this over and used the opposite side to do that, um, I usually use a little bit of paint to blend the edges wherever I put the paper. So I'm not real worried about the fact that there's some, um, the paint line or yeah, the pen lines on here. So I'm just cutting this little piece out. And that way, be able to paste her right in there. Now, I don't know what um, everybody uses to uh, as their medium to kind of glue these down. No, I used, I mean, for a while, I just used Mod Podge. But then, and also I use the edges in the scraps, so I don't ever throw those away. They make great extra pieces for layering. Um, so I, yeah, I used Mod Podge for a while, but then I bought this, the 3D Matte Gel. And I have not used that yet, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, and so Rachel says, are the longer, oh, are the larger size papers available in the UK? That's a great question. Um, I'm not sure. I know that they are available in the US and I know that you can, uh, retailers can special order larger sizes. But as far as if they're available in the UK, I'm not sure. So what I could do is, um, since I don't have the answer to that, I can find out and then after the live, I will put it in the comments um, to see if they are, I would think so, but I don't wanna tell you the wrong thing. And then also for anyone who is in the US, and likes the larger sizes for furniture. Um, I will also put my website because I do sell these and I have some of the larger sizes uh, available right now and I can ship. And my website is www.forestloredesigns.com but I'll also put it in the comments too. Okay, so I was just reading, oh. From Florida. Oh, hi. Hi, Erlinda. I love Florida. I'm actually going there in June. So. I'm going to tip you up for a second so you can hopefully see this. But see how that now nicely fits right inside? So we'll paste her down. And then for our edges, let me just set her aside. Go either way. Um, all right. So I will use some of this. And let's get these other ones. Okay. Um, a bunch of my paper just fell on the floor. Oh, well. Okay, so as far as this, 
Here, let me tip this up for just another second. I apologize. It's hard when I have to keep oh, switching angles. Um, so, layout-wise, I'm thinking that I'm going to use this portion here. So I'll have there to there. But then I'll still have some of down the side and this side. And that's probably what I'm going to turn and use in this portion, part of that. And then we'll rip some little pieces of this as well and put them in. Or I do have quite a bit of the uh, outside of the Sea Queen left that we could use too. So I try not to waste any of it. Um, even if I don't use it all in the same project, I always save the scraps and layer them with other things. All right, so let's cut. I'm going to do the same thing I did before and just kind of hold this up, decide where to cut it. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not the most organized. Definitely fit the messy creative stereotype. So that'll be All right, so now we will do the same thing with this little piece, cut it out. And now I don't know about you guys, but I was so impressed with the um, spring line of papers. There are so many that I cannot wait to use. It's like, as I saw each one, all these ideas kept popping in my head of, oh, I could use this here or there or with these colors or, I cannot wait to use the rest of them. Okay, so here's a little piece here. It'll go inside there. And then I can now use this to figure out, well, actually, I think I can get another piece. I can get another strip of the same size. You can see here without cutting into that. That is exactly what I will do. And then I can preserve the rest of the page for a different project. So we'll save her for another day. I'll just cut the excess white trim off. There we go. Okay, so now we'll have our two pieces for each of the panels. Now, I definitely do not like things that are um, kind of matchy-matchy. I prefer things that go together, but that don't necessarily match. So things that complement each other. Um, so instead of having it 
like this and this, and then doing the bottom to the same, I will probably do it. Well, I don't know, maybe. We'll see. We'll see as we go. So to start that, so I can kind of get an idea of where I'm gonna go from there. There's my little brushes. Well, I'll at least put these two down or put them on the cabinet so that I can decide what to do next. So although I usually have a some kind of a loose plan in mind, um, I don't always plan things out 100% because there's a lot of times that you think you know what it's going to look like, but once you start putting it together, it doesn't quite look the way you thought. So for me, I try to definitely, um, you know, leave some room for changing my mind or experimenting with something different. So just put a little bit of that down, but not all the way. It is peeling a little bit of the paint up. Not that it matters because it's under here. But I try to do this, I hope you guys can see. Um, try to do this a little bit at a time. I'm not quite sure how fast this dries, but I know when I've used Mod Podge, it dries rather quickly. And if I do too big of a section at once, it doesn't work out so well. Okay. And then I just move that down. That's good. Now, I'm also noticing that there's parts of the tree here and then it's more crackly. And this way is more crackly and then parts of the tree. So instead of making them match, I'm gonna do it opposite. Let's put this girl right there. So, Okay, you said you need the thing that I'm using to cut the rice paper. Yeah, this, this um, mat and then the ruler come in handy. I'm not, I originally bought it when I was trying to sew things, but I just figured out that I'm not very good at sewing. So now I use it for this. I tend to be the kind of person who tries a whole bunch of things, but which is good to try new things. But um, I rather quickly figure out what I will stick with or do long term or not. Okay. I will say too, though, sometimes um, for a while, somebody borrowed this for me, and when I didn't have it, I was able to use just a large piece of cardboard, and I would cut on that just as easily. And I'll just stick this down. All right. So we have that. Let's see what else we can use. Okay, so I see Lori said, did you use acrylic paint for the blue and then sand it? Um, no, I didn't. So what I use is, grab one. 
Um, Daydream Apothecary. So they are a newer paint company. Um, I do believe there, I know there's US retailers, but I do believe that there's also retailers in other countries and in the UK. So Daydream Apothecary is a chalk and clay based paint. So I used that. This is the coastal line from Warren to Whimsy and I used salt water and sea la vie. I did use a little bit of salt wash in the base coat and I just kind of slapped on the base coat, a little bit of the salt wash for texture, added a bit of the lighter blue, um, some spraying with the water bottle, letting it drip, some dry brushing, and I will still do probably three more layers-ish, depending, in different tones. Mm -hmm. So this is about halfway through as far as the paint finish. Okay, so now I just want to decide which parts of this, the outer piece, that we can use. I definitely love this seashell part. So I know I'll use that. And actually, you know what? would look really cool is I can probably divide this up so that part of the coral's here and part's over there. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little mark right here so that I know where to cut. Okay, so now that I have that marked off, so to show this a little closer for you, um, ooh, everything's backwards, I always turn it the wrong way. So the tall coral sticking up, this I'm gonna use on the left side, and then this bottom coral and shell, I will use on the right. And actually, I might have enough where I don't have to use the arches paper. Uh, we'll see because I like the texture on it, so I might use it anyways. Okay. See, so this is where I save the bottom piece. And I will cut out what I'm going to use the other piece. All right, so now I have this piece to add here, but I don't like obviously this block transition between the two pieces. So, in order to make that look better, I'm going to check how far down the other piece goes. So it goes about to here. And one of the things I really like to do, I don't know what everyone else does, but I like to kind of rip the paper in a jagged edge. Because then I can layer more jagged edge pieces on top of it. And it looks more, um, I don't know, I guess a little more organic than just.
And so now we have these pieces both together. Um, probably when, before I'm done, I will take the camera and move it up closer so you can see a little more detail of what I'm doing. I'm getting blue paint all over me. Okay. So I can definitely see, obviously, a transition here. So this is where I'm going to start to match up maybe some other elements like this. So now this little wave curl, I'm going to use that. And in the piece that's already here, there was a bit of that same darker blue coming up. So we're just going to make it look like this was another part of that wave. So unfortunately, doing it this way and using different elements from different papers um, and kind of matching them all together does, it is time consuming. Um, but I really like, or especially if you're cutting out individual design elements, but I really like the fact that what you end up with at the end is completely, um, you know, your own because it doesn't come that way in one solid paper, you're really making your own art out of it. And so that's one of the things that I really enjoy about being able to do this. So it actually, it reminds me a little bit of, um, you know, if you're doing a junk journal or if you're into collaging and putting papers together in certain ways, and that's kind of what this is like. Okay. So yeah, that little wave will look really good there. And again, I just rip the edges a little because I don't like that perfectly square cut off look. Okay. And we'll stick this down. And also to, um, you know, I try to keep in mind everything that I do is just, I don't do anything in a way that it's like perfect because I don't like that. Plus perfect is really hard to keep up with, right? So for me, I like messier textured paint finishes because, um, I don't know, you know, if it gets a little ding, a little dent, it doesn't matter. It still looks great and it goes with the finish. Um, you know, I like the paper to be kind of asymmetrical and pieces here and there. And, you know, that way I feel like you really can't mess up. You're just constantly adding, layering, you know, till you get what you like but you can always paint over it. You can always add more paper over it. So that way there's not a lot of pressure to, um, I don't know, have it perfect on your first try. Um, all right. I do like this tiny little flower leaf here. So I'm just gonna cut this out as well. And then we'll move on to the other side. Then we'll glue our Sea Queen down. So again, for this one to help blend, just jagged rip. Okay. And I really like too the way this um 
paper, now that even the large sizes are the more fibery kind of paper, you can really get that nice, like, uh, blended, ripped edge. But see, because it's going up, I don't like the right edge, which is very straight. So we'll kind of fix that too. Oh yeah, that looks good. Just place that right there. So actually, I will move you a little closer so you can kind of see. I have to be like stepping right before I sleep. All right, so this is going to get bumpy for a second, but bear with me. Let me just see if I can. Nope, I can't flip it. All right. Okay, so it's backwards, so I apologize. Darn it, this way. So hopefully you can see a little bit more close up of how, so this was that original wave and then I blended into this one. We added a little of the dark leaf up on the edge, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Unfortunately, my phone is huge. Oops, sorry. My phone is huge. And while it has a great camera, it hardly fits in this, um, whatever, phone holder thing. It's almost too big, and it tries to, like, slingshot it out, which isn't good. Okay. Yeah, a little crooked, but uh, I think you can still see what I'm doing and hopefully be able to see this side a little bit better. There. A little better. Okay. So same thing. I'm going to do the same thing on this side just to kind of blend. Um, Okay. So here's that other little shell piece that I wanted to use. Oh, thank you. Oh, Lori. So Lori said the furniture on my website is stunning. Well, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if you look on my website or also on my Facebook or Instagram page, you can see different projects that I've done. Uh, different pieces. And... Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. It's starting to come together nicely, huh? Okay. So this part, so just kind of, just repeat, repeat what you were doing. Now, you know, it makes me wonder, so I'm in, um, I'm in upstate New York. Um, we are up. Not too far from Canada. So here, obviously, it's cold um, in the winter and lots of snow. And we're starting to get a little bit of spring. So the sun was out. <clears throat> it did snow yesterday, though. And as much as I love the snow and 
winter sports. I am really ready for spring and sun at this point. I think after a while, you kind of get the, um, you get the, like, winter blues of just being indoors. So, and I'm fortunate that I do enjoy winter sports, but I still just want to be able to be in the warm sunshine. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. East side of the states, 100. I'm 100. Okay, so Lori says she's 180 miles from Canada um, west. Okay, so yeah, I am not far from Niagara Falls. So that is somewhere that um, we go often just because it's fun and pretty and there's a lot to do in that area. And then we go to, um, we're a big hockey family. So we go to a lot of different tournaments and um, hockey camps in Canada. Well, we did until COVID and then now I think they're gonna start them again, which would be nice. So that's stuck down. And let's find something else to help blend it. I really love how the Sea Queen has these different like leaves and branch structures going through the top of it. They're subtle when you see the whole design together, but when you start looking at it uh, element by element, there's just some really cool stuff in this paper. Okay. What are we going to do with this one? So I do like, there's a big leaf right here. So I think that's what we'll use. Yeah, if you ever, um, you know, put something together and you don't like it or it doesn't blend well, it's so easy to just add more on top, just add more paper. Okay, I forgot where I was going with this. I don't want to cover up too much in my shell. Now I'm just going to cut this little part. Okay, and then again, just kind of tear it unevenly. And I'm doing the same to the bottom. So I can say on this piece, well, actually, that's not too bad. There's one little spot at the bottom that I think we might have to add another piece of paper. Something looks a little weird to me. And I don't know how everyone else does this as far as like, do you put the medium on the paper, on the piece, on the whatever? Maybe it depends on what you're working on and the size of the paper you're using. I don't know, but I kind of 
just do whatever. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I really like how the this has a little um like grid pattern in the background, how that looks up against the tree branch. It's good. Okay. And there is a little spot right here that I'm just going to use a little more. Blend. Okay. Yeah, but I don't like that it then covers our shell. So we're going to make this just go up to the edge, hopefully, and not cover. Oh, there we go. Yep. Perfect. Oh. Yeah, you can even patch, you know, like I just did with this. You can even patch with little pieces. I know some people, and probably depending on your project as well, too, that some people like to make sure it's really flat. Um, but because I like texture, I don't mind if the paper is wrinkled. Sometimes if you even paint over the wrinkles a little bit, like dry brush, it looks really good. Okay. I have one other little area that I see. And then probably what I'll do is maybe I'll show you a little bit more of the layered painting on the edge that I'm doing. And then we'll glue our sea queen down on the front. and. It'll be about it because uh, sometimes with certain chalk paints, if you try to keep painting layer over layer over layer when they're wet, the paint will pull back. And because we don't want that to happen, um, I sometimes you get to a point where you're going to overwork it and you just have to kind of let it dry and let it go for a little bit. Okay. So, I do like this. I think it maybe needs something here. So, and just another torn piece. I don't know if you can tell, but I get pretty messy. Okay. So, yeah, that looks better. Again, because we're trying to kind of make this all look seamless um when there was just the sweet perfume paper up here and nothing else it did look a little strange but just covering one corner with this same grid pattern makes it flow a lot better so i do the same on the other side Well, something similar, but again, not perfect, not totally matching. So now this one again. Mm -hmm. All right, I do like that better. Just adding a little bit of that other texture to the top seems to really help. Let's see how wet. If the edges of this are too wet, well, it's not too bad. Let me just see what you guys see. Okay. 
we can move you a little bit. Okay. So here I have the sea leaf, the lighter blue, the salt water, um, this brighter green that I kind of blended in a little. But since I want this to look, let me grab a different brush. So a lot of times, too, as far as brushes, um, a lot of times I do use the Daydream Pop Carry um, chalk paint brushes. They're my favorite. But I do use Klingons once in a while as well. Okay, so in order to make this, here, I'm going to move this. I'm going to get water all over. All right, in order to start to get more of that, like, rusty grunge kind of finish here. Um, let's see. I'm going to do. So I've just used these little, I don't know, these are little metal plates or whatever they are that I always seem to find at Goodwill. So I generally, because they're cheap and they wash easily, I use them for paint pads. So this color here is just the, is just a uh, dark brown. And it's kind of a um, cool tone brown. Maybe if it'll come out, if it won't squirt out, I'll dump it out. That works too, right? Usually I just squirt them out of these bottles, but sometimes it gets a little chunky and clogged up. What else? Spray bottle. And so I just take a little bit, not too much. And because up under here, let me get out of the way, up under here is where it's going to look like it's dripping down. You can just kind of press some of that in. Up under that edge. And then I would drag it down a little because I mean, you don't want that, you know, you don't want like a hard line. So, just kind of dragging it down a little, and then water. And it just starts to drip. And on, well, you probably can't see it, but on the floor, I actually just use paper plates that I put one under each leg so that I can paint the bottom without getting paint um, on my floor. And then because I use a lot of water when I paint, if it drips down, it just kind of collects in the um, paper plates and then I can throw them out afterwards. So I don't know. Again, I don't know what other people use, but that seems to work for me. And then I can just get rid of them. So this is just, again, using some of the water that's already on there because chalk paint will blend. And especially this, um, I will say, Daydream of Upgrade blends amazingly well. And so I'm just kind of helping it where the water already did make it drip. And I'm just kind of... Blending it in and making it drip down a little more. So if you guys can see that. So I'll probably do more of that in different places. But another thing that I'm going to add a little bit is this kind of darker burnt orange. In just a little bit because I don't want it to be too bright. But... Actually, let me show you this on here just so you can see. 
So you can see the green, the brown, that burnt orange, our teal, the C la vie. And when you're going for, and you guys can't even see me, I have to move this a little. Okay. So when you're going for um, a, when you want to contrast colors so that they really pop. Now, sometimes we're painting things that we want to be more subdued, which is fine too. But if you really want things to pop, using colors that are on the opposite end of the color wheel will definitely do that. So by having this real warm teal um, and then having the green, which is close to it in the uh, cool tone color family, but then by adding this warm to toned orange makes it really pop the contrast. And I don't know, you know, I know that all of us um, do different things as far as some of us are more into scrapbooking or mixed media, some do furniture. If, if um, talking about any of that as far as like the color wheel, colors, complementary colors, um, and different things like that, if that's something that um, you guys are interested in learning more about, let me know in the comments and that way um, I know the next time I do a project with you guys what what you care about seeing or what you want to learn. So now just a tiny bit. I don't want to go way overboard with the orange. But just a little bit. And again, some water just to help it kind of drip and blend on its own. And actually, too, just to show you this, another reason that I like chalk paint is because you can not only um, remove layers, you can sand, you can wait till it's dry and actually sand a little bit, but you can also uh, take some paint off with just water when it's wet. So that way you can kind of decide where you want something or more of something or less of something. You can peel back layers and only show through little bits or whatever, depending on the desired effect that you want. And I'm just going to hit that with a little more water. And I want the orange to look like it's coming from up underneath, but not necessarily on the edge. So again, I can just kind of dab it and pull back just a little bit of that color. And then as that dries, and you do it again and do it again. That's how you really create these very interesting layer finishes. And there even is down on the lower edge. It's probably hard for you guys to see. So there's a ledge here. So one of the things, too, is as that drips, that ledge is catching some of the brown, some of the orange. And it will deposit some of that pigment there in the edges as well. So... That at least to show you a little bit of how I create some of my different heavily layered effects. All right, but now let's put our our girl on here, and that way, then this can all dry, and I can do uh, some more layers. What did I do there? I could do some more layers. There she is later tonight or tomorrow morning and when I have it completely finished I will stage and photograph it and um, you guys can see the photos of the end result
it. I just have to move her a little bit. The other thing, too, that's going to be a little difficult is underneath this paper, there's these little knobs that are part of the um, knobs that the little handles that went on this. So I'm going to have to, after I get this down, and then I'll cut the middle where the drawer or where the door should open. And I'm also going to have to poke through these little things. So hopefully I can do that without uh, making too big of a mess. Of our sea queen. Okay, so I think that's about good. And again, I'm not worried about perfect placement because I'm going to use a little bit of paint at the end to blend edges. Okay. I have to say, I'm really liking this um, 3D matte gel. I think it's thicker. And it's so it holds in place better and it's not as liquidy as like Mod Podge. Because the Mod Podge, with it being liquidy, if you get too heavy handed on it, it starts to kind of make the little fibers in the paper come up. So I just start with a section. And then now I can tell where it ended. See, there's those little knob things. And I'll probably use, because of the colors that are used in this, um, I like to add a little something metallic to most of the product or projects that I do. So I'll probably end up adding a little um, copper, maybe a metallic copper to this. And maybe that's what I'll do the handles in because that'll look nice again with that orange. The orange of the copper will look really good with all these blues. Ooh, those little things are going to give me a hard time underneath there. That's all right. Okay, so we're just going to stick her down. And then I'll have to wait until everything dries till I can do more. So like right here, I'm just pressing in because I can feel the edge of where the door splits. And I do feel like I have a couple little, like there's a little wrinkle right here. There's a little one right here. But like I said, I don't mind that. And because I like things to look aged. So when I use the paint around the outside to blend some of these edges, um, sometimes I even paint a little bit, you know, more toward the middle to keep it, uh, to make it all look cohesive. So then if I dry brush on top of some of these little wrinkles with a darker color, it just makes the little wrinkles pop out and look even more kind of vintagey, which I like. Okay. So she is on there. So I'll have to exacto knife. I'll cut. And then I'm going to cut here and here where these little things need to poke out. And then I'll be able to kind of place them gently down and around. And then I'll paint the knobs and put those on. And I think it'll look. Let me move this over. 
I think it'll look good when it's done. So just so you guys can see, a little bit, I'll turn it. Turn it this way. But you can see this edge does not have the orange yet. It's just a couple blues and greens. And then this edge is our other colors going down. And I think this is going to be very, very cute when it's done. All right. So I'm going to let this dry so I can then um, continue working on it later. And let me just see. Oh, so where are we here? Oh, Joy says hi from Calgary. I've not, I've been to Toronto and Niagara Falls. Um, I've not been to Calgary. Let's see. Oh, and Lori says, um, this is fun to watch. She's a scrapbooker and learning mixed media. So have never tried decoupage, even on small items. The paper in the center is such a great fit. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, and see, I traditionally have done more decoupage on furniture and not as many um, smaller projects. So I'm trying to learn more about mixed media and using it on smaller things, um, smaller items and things that I put and sell in my shop. So we're both kind of learning it from the opposite sides, aren't we? But I think what's really nice is any of the techniques that you learn, you really can apply them, whether it's to something large like furniture or something small, you know, a smaller project or a journal, or I've been doing little books lately. Claire, thank you. She says it's stunning. Thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you, Rachel. All right, so I will um, see you guys next time with a new project. Thank you for hanging out with me. Again, I really appreciate it. Um, the Decoupage Queen spring release papers are on their website, um, decoupagequeen.com. Also, I am a retailer. I know there's other retailers that you can find on the retailer page. Um, mine is Forest Lore. My website is forestlordesigns.com and I'll put that in the comments. But thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate all of you and I will see you next time. Bye.